The Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are the most beautiful smartphones of the whole year. They're slim, but really sharp looking, and they have really thin bezels. That's probably the trademark feature that you guys all probably already know about. I got them in about six weeks ago, and I've been using them as my daily driver ever since, and I was really happy with them in the beginning, but let's see if that holds true through this whole review period. I'm Jacqueline here from Nothing But Tech 88, and let's get into my Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus review. Let's start with the obvious. The S8 is a real looker. In this stealthy black color especially, seeing this in someone's hands will make you do a double take as you admire the glass metal sandwich and the almost obsolete bezels. Samsung obviously wanted to make a phone that would catch people's attention and they 100% succeeded. The screen up front looks even more beautiful than the design. It melts over the edges creating a really immersive experience. Samsung is calling it an infinity display due to the lack of side and top and bottom bezels. It is a gorgeous 1440p display with a little trick up its sleeve. That trick is the aspect ratio. It is now 18 and a half by nine, making for more screen real estate in certain applications and compatibility issues in others. These issues show up as black bars surrounding the content that is not supported, whether it is in a YouTube video or another application like Snapchat. As I said in my first impressions video, I'm hoping that as technology improves and developers update applications, this issue will be fixed. But until then, Samsung is offering a pretty decent alternative. With a click of a button, Samsung software will crop in slightly on the content content being displayed to fit the panel, but that means that you will lose some of the frame in videos and in other applications. I prefer the black bars over the solution, and they blend in pretty well with the bezels. The screen also affects the button placement. The navigation buttons are now on-screen buttons, which adds a major bonus. You can now swap the order of the multitasking and back button. One major downside is the fingerprint sensor placement though, as it now can't be placed on the home button. It is now adjacent to the camera, which looks sleeker than a random button in the middle of the phone, like we're seeing on some iPhone 8 renders, but it makes it harder to find and reach, which leaves you with two other biotech options, face recognition and iris scanning. Face recognition is extremely fast and works for most angles, but it can be easily tricked by a picture of you. So if you're into the security, this is not the pick. Option two is iris scanning, which is a little bit more temperamental and it's harder to activate, but it is a lot more accurate. I prefer this option as my phone has access to my emails and other important media that need security. I would love to see a fingerprint sensor integrated into the screen next year, as that's still my favorite way of unlocking my smartphone, but I understand how much advanced technology would be needed to do so. The top bezel house is the iris scanning and the front facing camera, which is a bit of an improvement this year. Skin tones are better and it might even be a little bit of a wider lens. The back camera, however, is the one that really has my interest. It is my favorite smartphone camera on the market, so much so that I actually use it for a lot of my posts on Instagram instead of my Sony a6500. I made a full video comparing the Samsung Galaxy S8, the LG G6, and the iPhone 7 Plus, so if you're interested in a detailed analysis of all the photos, you should check out that video. I'll leave it here and link below. The gist of it is, though, that the photos are always sharp, really saturated, and very contrasty. The dynamic range is also very good on this camera, but I do find at times that it overexposes parts of the image if there's two completely different lighting conditions. The video quality on the back facing camera is also really, really good, but the stabilization is not quite there yet. It still is a bit of the jello effect that Samsung's past phones have been plagued with. That's all I'm gonna touch on in terms of photos and videos on this camera, but my concluding statement is over the past six weeks, I have not been disappointed once. So for about half of my testing with this phone, I used a smaller S8, but about two and a half weeks ago, I got in the larger S8 Plus. The devices are almost identical with the obvious difference in screen size and battery capacity. The S8's battery life was pretty average, about four and a half hours of screen on time on really heavy use. So when I got the S8 Plus, I was not expecting much more than that, but I'm happily surprised. There have been days where I've gotten over six hours of use, which is something that I haven't gotten on any device for a very long time. So just to quickly touch on it, the S8 Plus has been kind of a mixed experience for me. I love having the extra size while watching videos and the extra battery life, but the bigger size makes one hand use near impossible, even though the bezels are really small. And it also makes the fingerprint sensor even harder to reach. I think for those reasons, I definitely prefer the S8 over the S8 Plus, even if it has a slightly smaller screen and shorter battery life. The last topic to discuss here is performance and damn, the S8 and S8 Plus are both loaded with really high-end specs. They both have an IPS68 certified dust and water resistance. They also both have 1440p displays and Corning Gorilla Glass 5. 
They both also packed a Snapdragon 835 chip and 4 gigabytes of RAM. They're loaded with 64 gigabytes of internal storage, but just like last year, the micro SD card slot is still there and you can go up to 256 gigabytes of storage. So obviously, those are pretty high in specs and it definitely shows in the way that this phone runs. Moving from applications are really, really smooth and I don't find that applications reload a lot because it has 4 gigabytes of RAM. The Samsung skin over Android is still pretty heavy and there is some bloatware downloaded depending on what carrier you get, but it's a huge improvement over past years and honestly, I'm really happy with some of the additions that Samsung added, like the swipe up to get to the app drawer which feels very pixel-like. Now, there's obviously an elephant in the room and that's Bixby. And uh, yeah, Bixby is probably not gonna be something that I ever use because I'm really attached to Google Now and the Google Assistant, but it's nice to see that Samsung is trying something with Bixby and uh, Bixby Vision, like in the camera app, where you can uh, find objects online by just taking a photo of them or translate words. It's still really not that accurate, and it's a very hit or miss situation where um, you'll show it an object and one time it'll pull up the object and then another time it won't, or it will pull up something very general, like if you showed a smartphone, it will pull up a bunch of different smartphones and not the one that you uh, had taken the photo of, but it's nice to see that this assistant is uh, starting to grow and we just saw at Google I.O. that Google announced something similar to it, so it's going to be a race to see who can get those better first, but uh, I actually found that feature pretty innovative. Uh, what I don't really like that much though is the Bixby button. So uh, Samsung has included a dedicated button to launch Bixby on the side of their phone right underneath the volume rockers and it's in this place where I feel like I always press it when I'm trying to move the volume down. So it would be nice if we could remap it to something else that would actually be a little bit more useful, like a camera button or something. Even still though, the placement is really not ideal. I think it would have been better if they put it above the volume rockers, as most people are probably not gonna be wanting to activate Bixby. I'm not really gonna discuss how useful of an assistant it is yet, as it hasn't gotten all of its features. It will get them later this year, and I'll discuss it when it does. But overall, I think I'm gonna stick with Google Assistant until Bixby really has a drawing feature to bring me over. So that's the Samsung S8 and S8 Plus. They're almost perfect smartphones. Obviously, a manufacturer can never get every single thing right. In the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, it's the Bixby button, it's the mediocre speaker, and it's the software. But really, those are very minimal things, and Samsung really created an amazing smartphone this year. I think it's the best one on the market. We'll have to see if my opinion changes when the new Google phone comes out. But for now, if you're in the market for an Android smartphone, the S8 and S8 Plus would be my pick for you. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, definitely smash the like button. If you loved it, feel free to subscribe. I'll have a lot more content coming to you guys very soon. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye.